The 2023, later this year, in late September, in fact, we're going to Marco Simoni, just outside of Rome. Um, and that's where Luke Donald will lead the European side as they try to reclaim the cup. And will that include some live golf players? Here's Captain Luke. It's a shame uh, that there was some, some resignations. Um, you know, a lot of these guys um, have built their legacy around DP World Tour members and, and uh, their participation and everything uh, with the Ryder Cup. Um, but, uh, yeah, ultimately, um, you know, that was their decision. And uh, um, they're, unfortunately, they're off the table now for, for, for selection purposes uh, for me, myself. So, um, I'm, you know, as I said, I've always been trying to concentrate on, you know, looking at all the players that week in, week out are committed to try and make that Ryder Cup. And that, and that hasn't changed. And, uh, um, you know, my, my situation is what it is. I, I got to always take what I have in front of me and, and kind of go forward. And um, I'm still excited about the, all the players we have on offer, um, both rookies and, um, you know, established players. And I think uh, our team will be very good. Um, you know, I think. Uh, in terms of what Zach is doing and, and uh, his his uh, options, you know, I think that's that's kind of his call. Um, you know, whether um, whether live players play his um, uh, on his team is again. Um, I haven't really talked to him too much about it as a captain's agreement, as you said. And let's not forget, there's still live players that that can play on, on my team. You know, they're still eligible if they're members of the tour and were born in Europe. So that uh, is still uh, an ava a possibility for some guys. Luke was in here yesterday and said that he has some clarity now when it comes to the live players. Most mm -hmm. of them have turned down their tour membership so they can't be involved with the Ryder Cup. I would be curious, how much time, if at all, have you spent thinking about if a possible live player could either qualify or maybe be a pick for your team? You know, I mean, I haven't given... <laughs> It's funny you say that because we I was talking about that just the other day with uh, some of my vice captains. I mean, we're at a point right now where when it comes, to, it's not even a discussion item. I mean, we're trying to figure out, you know, there's maybe a couple guys that have come close to securing their spot in the top six. But when it comes to picks, it's not even on my radar. Um, I mean, I haven't even, especially given, Rex, how many points are still out there. Whether you're talking about major championships or elevated events or all the above. I think it'd be premature and almost irresponsible to go into that. I mean, I, I just don't, it's not on my radar right now. Not on his radar, but he was in conversation this afternoon with Brooks Kepka. There they are. And Brooks certainly interested in being a part of Zach Johnson's United States team. It'd be awesome to represent the United States. And anytime we do it, it's always fun, but I'm not, focused on it it's not like my first thought when i go go play well this week if i handle my business out here everything will take care of itself if i go i mean if you win go second first 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 it'd be kind of tough not to pick right so if you go take handle business i feel like i should be fine but uh it's up it's not up to me it's up to zach and and what goes on so um i just play my best and see what happens from there but i'd love to play for him mike 19 just, just following on from that Brooks, sorry. If you needed a pick, would you be confident of, of getting one? Confident? I, like I said, it's tough to be in Zach's mind or where he's at, but um, I'd love to make it hard on him. I think that would be cool. Uh, like I said, I, the only thing I can do is just go play good, and if I play good, everything takes care of itself. But do you think there are factors in play here beyond what you do on the golf course? It's, it's a different situation, right? Yes, like I said, it's not up to me. I'm not, I'm not the one making the decisions. I can only just go play golf. I mean, I have no idea about getting picked. Obviously, if I can keep, continue to play really well for the rest of the year, then obviously there's a chance. Um, and yes, I would definitely like to play in the Ryder Cup. It's, you know, it's one of my favorite events uh, to play in. And, you know, especially after the last Ryder Cup, obviously had a pretty good week. And yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's an awesome event. And, yeah, I'd love to be a part of it. Since, since you're obviously not out here, do you feel like you might have to do something different in regards to talking to him more, lobbying yourself? Because he doesn't really know much about what you guys do out there. 
No, I mean, I've known Zach for a long time, so um, I'm sure he's keep an eye on things and you know you just never know obviously play well in the majors the next you know the next three majors and you know just play some good solid consistent golf from here on out the rest of the year who knows what will happen so technically they could make this team they could be selected by Zach Johnson Jaime Diaz joins us now should they be permitted to play the Ryder Cup why or why not you know, this afternoon I, I said, what the heck, you know, I, I was looking at narrow golf criteria and I thought, yeah, the, the guys want them, they'd be good chemistry, they're great players, yeah, it helps them win. And then I thought the issue is bigger than that. You know, the live threat still exists. And the deterrent to that has been you don't let players have their cake and eat it too. You know, play, take the live money, take the live prize money, and still be able to come back for the cherry picking of golf's greatest events, of which the Ryder Cup is. Now, the players who qualify for the majors before they join LIV are eligible for the la for the majors as long as those qualifications stand. Mm -hmm. We don't know about the Ryder Cup, but I think the Ryder Cup is in that class. And I think although DJ, everybody likes him, everybody wants him, he has not been, you know, combative against the tour yet. He represents that threat. He's one of the players. If you reward him, what are the players who didn't get rewarded, didn't go to LIV, how are they going to feel? And you have to punish those who hurt the establishment if they ever want to come back. So I just feel like the Ryder Cup should be hardball, just like everything else at this moment from the golf establishment if they want to prevent Liv from becoming more powerful. Paul, well, how do you see it? Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for America. Obviously, it's a, a very different scenario in America than it is in Europe, where we're more advanced in our court case uh, with, with Liv. Um, you know, I had an interesting conversation a couple of weeks ago. I was in Houston playing a Champions uh, Tour event, and I had an interesting conversation at dinner with Podrick. He's always going to have an interesting conversation with Podrick. And uh, I, he's always a sounding board, and he's a guy I like to bounce around ideas. And the narrative is, you know, is the Ryder Cup purely Europe against purely America, or is it against the two tours against each other? And he made a point. He said, look, I always felt there was representation in the European tour, more so than Europe. And it made me think, and, and, uh, and uh, I remember it goes back to 2002, I've just hold a win and put, we're on the green, everybody's excited. Ken Schofield, the executive director, came up to me, gave me a big bear hug, and I remember the words I said to him, I hope this puts a few more quid in, your, in, in, in the coffers, Ken. And he says, don't worry, Paul, it will, it will, it will. So obviously, you, you know, that's where I was thinking at that time. You know, we used to go back then the following week on tour, and every single player would be coming up to you and hugging you and thanking you for, you know, playing as well as you did, because, you know, it was going to put money into the European tour, more money that they would then play for. So it's very much part, you know, as the ownership of European, uh, the, 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 the European element of Ryder Cup has evolved to more and more ownership by the European Tour, obviously everything is going to be caught up, um, you know, and the collateral damage here is, um, is the Ryder Cup. And, and you know, I, I can't see any way that these players uh, will be coming back for a number of reasons, uh, certainly from a European perspective. I can't speak for America. Um, you know, we're not losing the quality of players that you potentially could be, and certainly in Brooks and, and DJ, uh, but you're potentially losing captains going forward but I think it's so acrimonious over in Europe the court case has been very very clear that the European Tour were right uh, to act the way they did and you know these guys on day one I remember speaking to them personally the Ryder Cup could be collateral damage here if you guys go to live they were aware of all of this stuff that went down with it and you know the decision was made yeah well said by both of you uh, I mean I, I couldn't agree more uh, it's, it's not so much about acknowledging the good play of a Dustin mm -hmm. Johnson or Brooks Kepka when they're playing on live as it is rewarding the players that did not bite that could have been mm -hmm. and gone to live. That's the right thing to do, at least in my view, if you're, if you're Captain Zach Johnson, as it relates to your conversation with Padraig Arrington, I'd say, look, I, at least in my view, the players seem to be doing both. They're representing their country, but they're also representing yeah. their respective tours. So if you yeah. take that out to Brooks Kepka and you take that out to Dustin Johnson, well, what are they doing? Okay, they may, they're representing their country, but they're also representing their tour. Mm -hmm. A tour, by the way, that is suing the PGA Tour. So mm -hmm. in playing in the Ryder Cup, it puts them on a stage worldwide. How more people watch the Ryder Cup, I think, than any other event worldwide, or certainly close to it. So it would elevate their tour. It would give that tour more stature and, and conceivably uh, a, a bigger stage to carry on suing mm -hmm. the PGA Tour. And if you look at how both Brooks and Dustin Johnson uh, have elevated themselves to a spot where they might be on the Ryder Cup. It's certainly not via live. It's via their success on the PGA Tour and via their success mm -hmm. in past Ryder Cups. That's the thing about live. They don't have a qualifying process. They poach stars. Mm -hmm. I call it parasitic. I think that's the very definition. It's a tour that's not capable of developing stars. Mm -hmm. It's not capable of adding weight to a star. That's the very definition of parasite. And why would you let that into the arena of the Ryder Cup? 
Competitively, it's a strong case that they're a better team, the United States, with Brooks Koepke and Dustin Johnson versus, with all due respect, fine players, Kitayama, Wyndham Clark, Chris Kirk, Sahith Tagala. Uh, but it's, uh, it's about much more than that, mm -hmm. as we know these days.